Hello and welcome to the Medical Ancillary Sales Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Berg, joined as always by my co-host, Vivian Hudson. Vivian, happy happy Friday. Not to give away when we record these, but happy Friday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's nearly my cocktail hour, so <laughs> things are looking up. <laughs> Just about there. So we, we have an ex- another great topic today, Viv, and this was your suggestion. I thought it was a great topic, especially piggybacking on the podcast that we did last week with Dr. Jen. The podcast that we did last week with Dr. Nicole, one of the things that we had highlighted was the importance of, to build trust with an office and how you go about building that trust. She had highlighted a few of uh, the things that she looks for in sales reps. And that dovetails perfectly with this article that you had uncovered. Yeah, so I think like people always like to do business with people that they like and people that they trust. And I think in the medical sales game, uh, trust is something that you don't always find. <laughs> no. Just because there's so many shady vendors out there and uh, you and I have both seen our fair share of things that have gone pear-shaped and if they're going pear-shaped for the rep, we know they're going pear-shaped for the doctor as well and that doesn't bode well for uh, building a level of trust with these doctors. So, yeah, I was scanning my bookcase and thought – uh, Stephen Covey's book, The Speed of Trust, that there was perhaps some some good things that we could pull out of there that would help reps really build trust quickly with their doctors so that they can build their businesses. I've done enough sales calls too to know and I've do, done ride-alongs with enough reps and you can tell when the doctor trusts the rep, when they're, they're uh, just their body language, they're, they're fully engaged and that is what ultimately what is separating the great reps from the average reps or the subpar reps is is probably that that trust factor right there so could you just briefly just highlight the 13 behaviors that help build trust and maybe we could pull apart a couple of these and see how they pertain to the medical ancillary industry sure so i'm just gonna spit out the all 13 and then we'll go back and and pick a few out but first one is talking straight the second one is demonstrate respect then we have creating transparency righting wrongs showing loyalty delivering results getting better confronting reality clarifying expectations practicing accountability listening first keeping commitments and the last one is extending trust so which one out of those, Mike, do you uh, really, really rings a chord with you? Well, only because we spoke about it last week, but Dr. Nicole had mentioned that people that are straight shooters are always going to get her attention over somebody that, that seems like they're, um, you know, they may be dancing around some of the facts or, or, or things like that. Somebody that is is... Um, can deliver a, a straight message, but also not lie to the doctor and pretend like you know the answer when you don't know the answer. And just being upfront about that is is very important. And that, that just goes along with being sincere. Right, right. So it's, it's the talking straight component. So part of that is providing some of the facts, just saying it how it is and, and really being clear about what, what you're um, talking about. So... Uh, not keep keeping it simple. It really comes down to just keeping it simple and straightforward. Absolutely. How about you? Yeah. What's number one on your list? Oh, um, I kind of like the accountability piece. Um, I think that if we can hold ourselves accountable, uh, then we learn to trust ourselves more. And I, I think that that is also important if we're, and I guess that dovetails into the keeping commitments uh portion as well, is if you're going to do something, then make sure that you do what you say you're going to do. I always say to my kids, it's not what you say, it's what you do. And you can say whatever, but if you don't follow through on it, then you're not going to build any trust and you're going to lose it very quickly. And once you lose trust, it's very hard to get it back. And I think that that's one important thing to know about trust is most people will automatically trust another person straight up, most people. But as soon as that trust is broken, it's very, very hard 
important to repair it. So if you keep to your commitments and hold yourself accountable as well as others, so um, then then that's really gives you confidence that you're a trustworthy person because it all starts with you. Absolutely. I would say next on my list would be clarifying expectations. And we cover this a lot when we talk about pull through. And this is really where that comes through. Getting the Getting a doctor to commit to do something is one thing, but where you'll, you'll dramatically improve your pull-through no matter what the service is if you clearly define the ex, clarify the expectations. What exactly is this program going to do for you? And I flip that around to the doctor. I ask them, what is it about this program that intrigues you? What are you hoping to achieve out of this? Where do you see this fitting within your practice? And then from there, I can see if maybe they have some expectations that are are never going to be met by this program and that's when you have an unhappy customer is when their expectations don't meet reality if you're if you're selling something that um, you know could be let, let's just take like an allergy program let's say and you say doc what are you what are you hoping to to get out of this program where do you see this fitting within your practice well Mike I'm I think I could see two patients a day and from that I want to make three million dollars a year well, they're going to be disappointed if, if that's their <laughs> expectation. So a lot of this is just managing expectations and clearly defining what we can and can't do and what your program can and can't do and and letting them know about those things uh, ahead of time. Yeah, ab- absolutely, absolutely. And I think um, what you were saying there about the expectations is I know that you've said uh, use that in your sales pitch before and I think that 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 kind of dovetails into that where you say well doc last time we came in you said that this program was great and you were going to use it so and then and then revisiting that spin selling that that you like to do and that kind of that's that sets up what you're expecting of the doctor and then if the doctor doesn't come through then it leaves you in a good place to say well what can I do to support you or what what can you expect of me to help me support you to follow through and um, I think one of the the behaviors that I like it's hard it's hard to pick the top one but I think listening first is always a good one as well and I know that we've spoken about that before but I think the the words like listen like you care is really important like we can listen but if we're kind of thinking about our next sales call or got something else going on in our mind, it's very apparent to a doctor that you're not really there or if you're listening with the intent of replying, of, of wanting to spit out what you want to say. You can see that written all say. over someone's <laughs> face when they're, when they're thinking of their reply while you're still talking and yeah. you know you're not actively <laughs> listening. So, yeah, to, to go along with that, just, just um, restating what they're telling you to make sure that you understand. That, that goes yeah. along with the act of listening. Yeah, so that whole paraphrasing. So it's like, so from what you're telling me, it sounds like blah, blah, blah. And then that highlights to the doctor that you're really listening to what they're saying. So ask them what their concerns are and, and see how you can help. Now, sometimes we don't always have a solution that might help what their latest problem is. But I, I bet you could go home and Google any number of um, articles that might help a doctor and next time you go in there and say here this is a a bit of reading that I thought you might like that might help some with the problem that you were discussing last time so whether it's a staffing issue or because god knows anybody that's been in business for themselves like staffing is probably one of the biggest headaches that you can have (laughs) Um, and time management so you know find them uh, find them a couple of little articles that can help on those and even though it's not in your product portfolio it's a good way to add value and and be that person that they can trust I would go next here, Viv, with keeping commitments. And there's little things that I've seen that successful reps do that the the reps that are struggling don't do. And right at the top of that list would be keeping commitments. A lot of times people, maybe you get a deal closed and you let the doctor know, well, I'm going to be back here in the first week to check up on you, make sure you don't have any questions. And then before you know it, three and a half weeks go by and uh, maybe I'll get around to getting over there. Or 
If you say you're going to uh, show up at uh, 11 o'clock on Tuesday and you miss that appointment and, oh, well, I'll catch him next Tuesday. It's those little things. And what, what I've seen with successful people, and this, this isn't even just for the deals you have closed. This is for your prospects. The one thing that I've seen that they do is they'll let the office know, hey, this is what you should expect out of me as a rep. I'm going to be back here at this time and I'm going to bring you that. Then when you show up at that time and you deliver exactly what you told them, even if it's not a customer, even if it's, it's just a prospect, if you keep doing those, those patterns, those habits, and they see that this is a person I can rely on, eventually you're going to have something that they need and who are they going to trust? They have different re sales reps that come in there. If you're the person that is always doing what they say, they're going to have confidence that what you're telling them, that what this program is going to deliver for them, that you're going to be able to come through on that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Viv, let's go for um, one more each. We're running cool. short on time here. Yeah. Okay. Give me your last favorite. Uh, oh, I think like writing wrongs always has to be a good one. Like, Damn you, Viv. And, that and was mine. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's like things don't always go as planned. And um, sometimes that, that means that you're kind of caught with your pants down, so to speak. Uh, sometimes codes go away. Sometimes there's a change in insurance reimbursements, whatever it might be. And often some of these things are out of way out of our control. But for doctors, they know that that's a fact of life. So if you've sold them a solution and the codes have changed or the rules have changed, the best thing that you can do is, is just go in and be upfront about it. Uh, don't make excuses excuses or anything, um, bear that, um, be humble about it and, and just say, look, I'm really sorry that that's happened. How, what can I do or how can I fix this or anything like that that just shows the doctor that you do genuinely really care about it. So I think that it's, it's just really putting up your hand as quickly as possible to say, yep, I didn't do the right thing or, or things didn't work out how we'd hoped. And, um, and, and we know, or I know. Yes, and I'll, I'll choose be real then because that dovetails exactly <laughs> with what you were just talking about. And I know that's an old saying, keeping it real, but <laughs> <laughs> the more real, the more genuine you can keep it, the better. But that means um, addressing tough things directly. And, and if something is... It's easy to, to ignore problems and pretend they don't exist, but that's really where the rubber meets the road. The doctor doesn't need you when everything's going great. Of course, it's fun to go into an office when everything is running smoothly. They need you when they have a problem. And I've seen this before with sales reps that are not as successful. They ignore those problems, hoping that they go away on their own or they just don't want to address the problems. But that's what you're paid to do is to solve problems. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, and yeah, I think that that's um if if you can do even half of those things, then you're on your way to building some good strong relationships. Because remember, people do business with people that they like and people that they trust. Absolutely. If you guys want more information on this, the name of that book is The Speed of Trust by Stephen Covey. Viv, thank you very much for this great topic. Thanks, Mike.